We've discussed the concept of money in an economy, both in terms of commodity and fiat money, but also in terms of the characteristics that money must have to be able to be counted as money, to, to, to be something that can be used in a liquid fashion as a medium of exchange, the unit of account, a store of value. And then we began talking about the supply of money with M1 and M2 talking about currencies and the uh, and basically the deposits that we put into checking accounts and to savings accounts. Really what we're getting into now is the supply of money and that is managed by differing institutions across the world. This is really set up in, in a number of different ways but for the most part in developed nations we use a system called central banking. And central banking, and I'll just kind of mark this as the institution institution here. The institution here in the United States is the Federal Reserve, which you might have heard referred to as the Fed at times. The Federal Reserve manages the monetary policy for the United States and it acts as the, quote, lender of last resort. This is a phrase that you hear often. It's kind of another way of saying something that, another way that you'll hear this, which is that they are the bankers. The Federal Reserve is the bankers bank. So you might have your cash, you might have a savings account or a checking account at one of the large American banks like uh, JP Morgan Chase or Citigroup or Wells Fargo or Bank of America. Maybe you use one of the larger regional banks like uh, Regions or uh, PNC, something of that nature. Or maybe you use one of the thousands of small banks across America. And in fact, I'll go out to this Washington, uh, I'm sorry, to this Wall Street Journal post in which you can see that we actually have, uh, as of the end of 2013, 6,891 banking institutions in the United States. These, these are deposit institutions where people put their checking and savings uh, into, so it, that are that are insured by the FDIC, uh, by the Federal Deposit Corporate uh, Insurance Corporation, and so. What we have is a lot of banks in the economy and what we need, what we've needed for a long time is a bank to be able to manage those banks, both in the regulatory sense and also in structuring the economy as far as how much money exists, how much money is in the supply for these banks to be able to lend out, for you to be able to use and for them to be able to use for productive, um, productive uses in lending. So if we think about this, this really leads us again back to the Federal Reserve itself. And so let's think about what the Federal Reserve is. I know that there's a number of different things. It's, you can kind of read about this in, in, in a number of books and, and kind of go over the text itself. But I thought I'd just kind of show a few things here. So one, I've got the Federal Board of Governors um, the Board of Governors for the Federal Reserve System right here. It's just to kind of give you a feel for where it is in D.C. In, in Washington, D.C., where it's headquartered, it is just down. It's on the mall itself. We've got the Lincoln Memorial here. And on the far other side is the uh, Congress of the United States, the House of Representatives down here on this side, and the Senate over here on this side. We've got the mall here, so this would be your, uh, your Washington Memorial. And then we've got the uh, the president's, obviously, the, the White House is right here uh, as well in kind of this complex area. And so it's right down there with all the other federal agencies, but the board of directors, the Federal Reserve itself, is actually a little different. It is, it, it's kind of a quasi-governmental, it's slightly independent of the federal government itself. It's connected to the federal government in that the uh, members of the board and the board chair woman herself, Janet Yellen, is nominated by the president. Uh, Janet Yellen was nominated by President Barack Obama uh, in late 2013 and was uh, actually nom uh, was actually went through the Senate on her confirmation in 2014. And so that process is kind of the check and the balance in the federal system uh, that we have here in the United States. But once you take effect, once you take that position, uh, board members and the chairwoman herself has a lot of leeway. It is generally thought of as non-political posts, although the members might have political leanings. They might be um, kind of members of the Democratic or, or uh, Republican Party. They typically are thought of in a non-political way, and that is partly because they have non-political terms. 
uh, board members can be nominated for a longer period of time. The Congress, or I'm sorry, the uh, chairwoman herself is nominated for uh, four years. I also would just note that Janet Yellen is the first woman to be the head of the Federal Reserve, and the Federal Reserve is generally thought of in economic circles, at least, as one of the most, if not kind of the most important position in the American economy. The govern, I'm sorry, the president and the uh, Congress have a lot of control over growth in the economy and how the government and how the uh, country is growing kind of different opportunities that are available but the Federal Reserve has a huge amount of influence not just in the American economy but also in the world economy partly because of the size of America but also just because there are a number of other countries that use American dollars as their reserve currency those are things that we'll get into kind of down the road but just want to highlight a few things. Uh, so one, uh, there's two different uh, or kind of two main uh, kind of branches of the Federal Reserve uh, as far as the governing structure of it. Uh, one is the board members themselves. Uh, you can see the five current board members. There's actually seven board members. There are two current vacancies. Uh, we've been running vacancies here for a while in the American uh, government. They have not been getting through Congress. Uh, it's it's a issue that we have on the federal courts and uh, and here in the economic realm as well. Um, there's also the federal open market committee, and we're going to talk about open market um, operations here in just a little while. But the open market committee is really de uh, derived from these 12 districts. So when the Federal Reserve was set up in 1913, as a result of Num just a number of cascading bank panics and financial institution issues that we were having in America. We said we need an independent, and this was happening across the world as well, that uh, developed nations were saying we needed an independent uh, arbitrary uh, kind of arbiter of the money supply that was not politically motivated or that was at least somewhat divorced from politics. And so as part of that system, uh, there's a uh, there's a kind of board of there's the open market committee and the open market committee is made up of the presidents of these 12 regional banks. So these are the regional components of the Federal Reserve. You can see kind of where they're listed out. Boston, New York. New York is probably the most important um, Federal Reserve bank in that it is also over Wall Street and where many of the major banks in America are based out of. Uh, but then you've also got Cleveland, obviously, Chicago, St. Louis Fed is where we've used a lot of data in this class that we've looked at. And you can see most of them are East Coast biased. We've also got one out here on the West Coast, uh, San Francisco. So I know in, in the books, and, and you might already be familiar with the Federal Reserve, but we're just looking at some of the information from the Federal Reserve uh, website itself. I just want to show you this information because I think sometimes it's a little easier to see it directly from uh, kind of the source itself. So again, the Federal Reserve was founded in 1913. Before that, we were going through just financial panic after financial panic. It was a very unstable time in the lead up to World War I. Uh, this was partly because the world was relatively open as far as cash flows. There was a lot of trade going on, 1870 to 1913 or so. And as a result of that, there was a lot of issues that we were having as the world was kind of developing into a little more of a modern economy. The Federal Reserve itself, uh, as I said, is kind of quasi-political in that it was created by Congress. Uh, the members are nominated by uh, the members of the board itself are nominated by the president and signed off by the Congress. However, they are relatively uh, divorced from politics. And we can see here kind of the main four areas that the Federal Reserve focuses in. And so what does it do? Well, it does a number of things here. The main thing that it does is it sets monetary policy. And so the monetary policy here is really what we're thinking about when we think about uh, the supply of money and the interest rates on the economy. Uh, it does a few other things. It regulates the bank activities. So all of those banks that you might use, the, the kind of the 7,000 banks we've talked about, 
the, one of the main things that it does is it regulates how those banks interact. And so one of the things, for example, that you would um, that you would normally see the Federal Reserve discussing is the reserve requirement. How much of your money a bank must keep in reserves if you need to come and get it. So banking is kind of, a, it's right, it's a thing that we do based off of trust. You give a bank some money. So let's say you bank with Wells Fargo, for example, and you've got $1,000. And so you go to Wells Fargo, you open up a, save, a checking account, and you say, okay, well, I'm going to give you this money. And uh, Wells Fargo goes, well, that's great. I will hold on to the money, and you can take out the money anytime you want, and I'm going to loan this out. And they loan that money out uh, to other uh, kind of businesses that are looking to use the money uh, productively for uh, capital expansion or things of that nature. And you can always go, even though that money has been lent out, you can always go and retrieve that money. Part of the reason is because we've got reserve requirements, which we'll talk about. But it's also a lot of uh, the banking industry is, is based off of the faith that we have that you will be able to go and get the money uh, that you are that you have put into it. So there's a few things that come up like uh, federal deposit insurance so that you know that up to $250,000 worth of uh, worth of deposits that you are guaranteed by the federal government. But there's a number of other regulations that go into kind of monitoring these banks. Uh, the main thing that it focuses on is the stability of the financial system and, and kind of containing systemic risk uh, when we think about systemic risk, this is really what you should think about as far as 2007, 2008, 2009, where we had banks that were going under that were insolvent and they were causing other banks because they were so closely related to be insolvent or go under as well. Uh, and then the final thing that it will kind of focus on is that it does some financial services. So it will, uh, it does some, uh, basically some foreign um, activities as well. And then it also processes checks and things of that nature. So the Federal Reserve itself is a pretty active body. And I wanted to go out here real quick and look at the monetary policy objectives. So this is from the Federal Reserve Act. Um, and if I just go out to the Federal Reserve Act, we can see here kind of all the different uh, issues that the Federal Reserve focuses on. We're not going to go into all of these. You could do a entire class on this. What I will just focus on is the monetary policy objectives. And so this is where we just were. And I'll just read this. The Board of Governors of the Federal Reserve System, those five individuals we were looking at, chaired by uh, Dr. Yellen. And the Federal Open Market Committee, those are the 12 member banks that we were just discussing, shall maintain long-run growth of monetary and credit aggregates commiserate with the economy's long-run potential. So when we're talking about the economy's long-run potential to increase production, that's GDP, right? That is output that we've talked about before. That's growth. So as to promote effectively the goals of maximum employment, stable prices, and moderate long-term interest rates. And you will often hear the Federal Reserve having, you kind of, you'll hear this term, which is it has a dual mandate. The dual mandate refers to two things, maximum employment and stable prices. The Federal Reserve is instituted to do two things, to keep inflation low and to keep employment high. And in fact, I will say that Janet Yellen, Dr. Yellen, uh, has even talked, uh, I mean, she one of the reasons that she was nominated and brought in is because she has a bit of a bias towards the employment side. Previously, we've had um, we've had board chairs who have maybe been a little more biased towards the inflation side. Obviously, employment has been a huge issue as a result of the recession uh, in the latter part of the 2000s. And so uh, employment and inflation are two things that the Federal Reserve focuses its efforts on. In fact, it has it has targets for this. So the maximum employment, or as we've thought about this as unemployment, it has an unemployment target rate, which is about 6.5% unemployment. It also has an inflation, annual inflation uh, target rate, and that is about 2%. And so when we think about kind of the Federal Reserve itself and what we're really looking at, 
this is the basis of the financial system itself. So if we just kind of go back here, we've got the Federal Reserve, we know it's a central bank. We know that a central bank itself is an organization that manages the monetary systems, it regulates the banking system, uh, and that it acts as a lender of last resort. It lends to banks to help those banks operate within the economy because banking is such an important part of what actually keeps our economy going. It takes the money that we have, our savings, and it turns it into uh, and it turns it into productive investments as well. And then I just want to highlight here for a second a few things that we were just focusing on, which is when we talk about the goals, right? When we talk about the goals of the Federal Reserve, we talked about a few things here. The first one that was most important is inflation stability or price stability, inflation stability. And I said here that the inflation target currently for the Federal Reserve is 2% per year. And then we also said that there's employment goal here. It's really employment, high employment, right? Employment, I'll put high employment here. Uh, and we're looking at an we're looking at an unemployment rate uh, that they target at 6.5%. There's a couple other goals that we just discussed and I'll just kind of highlight this as well. The general goal here is economic growth. So we're looking to increase output in the economy by keeping employment high and inflation low. And the fourth goal that we have here is financial, financial market stability. And this is really what we're getting at when we talk about systemic risk, that we can find ways to reduce the ability for, of one bank uh, going under uh, to affect all the other banks in the economy or to affect the entire economy growth rate uh, as we saw in the latter part of the 2000s. If these are the goals here, uh, then there's a few things as far as like what it does, right? What does it do here? And we've just, again, to highlight those, uh, we know that it sets the monetary policy. So it sets monetary policy. The second thing that it does is it lends to banks, lends to banks. The third thing that it does is it regulates bank activities, regulates. And then the fourth thing that kind of comes up is that it processes, right? So it does processing of normal bank activity for banks themselves. And so just want to kind of highlight the institution itself and think through what does that really look like and, and what do we mean when we talk about how it monitors, how it, how it uh, manages the supply of money. When we talk about this, this is where we're really going to be getting into the Federal Open Market Committee and we're going to be here talking about what does this activity look like and that's what's coming up next.